Hello all and welcome to this discussion regarding the pertinent arteries in the anterior neck session. This is Dr. Alsop. We will have a focus on the blood supply of the anterior neck as the name would suggest, but we're also going to focus on the blood supply of the thyroid and parathyroid glands. So let's get started. Let's focus on the common carotid first. And we and I'll point out on both of these images where we can find the common carotid. So you can see it located right here, as well as quite prominently on this kind of more anterior lateral image here. The common carotid is either a direct branch of the aortic arch on the left side, which is what we're seeing on both of these images, or the brachiocephalic trunk on the right. We will see that a little bit more in subsequent sessions, so those direct branchings. This artery is also the only one associated with the carotid sheath, or at least the largest one associated with the carotid sheath. It is going to be the medial most large structure with the vagus, which is going to be more intermediate and deep, and the internal jugular vein, which will be the lateral most structure associated with the carotid sheath. So you can see in this particular image, here it is the medial most. You can't really see the vagus nerve very well because it is deep. This is the ansa cervicalis, which we'll talk about in terms of the strap muscles. That usually sits kind of either right within the carotid sheath or on top of the carotid sheath. And then lastly here is that internal jugular vein. So you can see it's a fairly large prominent structure in this region. If you see an artery in the anterior, neck region, you are going to just assume that this is the common carotid. I think it's one of the easier arteries to locate. If you're looking over in this image, you can see what we refer to as the carotid bifurcation, which is where it splits into, the common carotid splits into its two terminal branches. This typically occurs at about the C3 or C4 level or just a little bit above the thyroid, the superior border of the thyroid cartilage, which you can see here. The head is tilted a little bit higher in this particular donor, so it looks a little bit higher um, than the superior portion of the thyroid cartilage. So let's talk about those branches of the common carotid. The terminal branches of the common carotid are the internal carotid. So this is gonna be the internal carotid on this particular image. This will be over here. So in this particular view, we're looking at an anterior lateral view. This is a completely posterior view, um, which we will see a, a bit more of this view in our third session, larynx and pharynx session. We're looking at the pharynx right here. I want to start with the internal carotid because uh, this one I think is easy to identify because it is the branch of the common carotid, car carotid artery that does not have any branches in the neck. And you can see that pretty well here. There's branches all over the place when we're talking about the external carotid and absolutely none when we're talking about the internal carotid. It is typically the more lateral of the terminal branches, but I don't want you to focus on that so much. Focus more on the fact that there are no branches. The internal carotid will travel to the cranium. It will enter via the carotid canal and supply blood to the brain, importantly, as well as the orbit and the forehead. So we'll spend a lot more time on the internal carotid when we get to the cranial cavity and brain session. The external carotid, and so this is the external carotid on this image, and it's pretty easy to ID over here because of all the branches on the posterior view. The external carotid is the primary source of blood to the face and superficial head, and it has eight branches, but we're just going to focus on one in this particular session, which is going to be your superior thyroid artery. You can see that here. It will descend to the thyroid gland, and the fact that it descends is important. All other branches of the external carotid will either move horizontally or it, they will ascend. So this is the only branch that is descending. So that's a nice way to be able to identify this one. 
It has several branches, but the one that we want you to focus on and be able to identify is this one right here, which is referred to as the superior laryngeal artery. You can see that over here as well. This artery accompanies the internal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve, which you can see right here. So that's going to be a branch of the vagus nerve. This pair will pierce through the thyrohyoid membrane. You can see that thyrohyoid membrane right here, and you can see it kind of entering into that region. And it's going, those, that pair is going to serve and supply the superior larynx. So you can see the bulk of the superior thyroid will continue down to this region to get to the superior thyroid gland. The last artery that we want you to focus on in this session is the supply to the inferior portions of the thyroid gland as well as the majority of the parathyroid glands and this is going to be your inferior thyroid artery. So you can see just a little bit of it in both of these images. This is not a branch of the external carotid, but rather a branch of the thyrocervical trunk, which is a branch of the first part of the subclavian artery. So this is the subclavian artery here. We'll talk about that in more detail in some subsequent sessions. And you can see this relatively short thyrocervical trunk and it almost immediately will branch into three to four branches. The one that ends up traveling medially towards the inferior thyroid gland, and here's your thyroid gland right here, this is going to be your inferior thyroid artery. You can see the other ones are either continuing to ascend for the ascending cervical or moving laterally. Now I want you to notice, and you can see it particularly well in this image, the close relationship with this nerve right here. So you can see right about here-ish how closely these two are related. This is, this nerve is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So um, this is an imp important anatomical relationship, this close relationship between the inferior thyroid artery and the recurrent laryngeal nerve, because if there's a need to ligate this artery, say for some sort of surgery involving the thyroid gland, you have to be very mindful of this close relationship with this nerve because it has serious implications in terms of the function of the larynx. All right. So this has been a review of the arteries we want you to identify for the anterior next session. As always, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions, and please have a great day.